next on world's scariest police chases. Get out of the street and go back in your house. You're in danger. A day of terror. A tank on the rampage, and there was nothing the police could do. We're running out the front door, and there's a tank coming down the street. And just as I got out of the driveway, he ran over my truck. San Diego, California, pursuit of a stolen military vehicle. For sheer terror, nothing has surpassed the day this city was held hostage by a deranged man who went on a rampage with a 100,000 pound tank. I'll call it the best I can. I'm trying to get this whole uh, mess on videotape. He's in big trouble. Uh, yeah, that's putting him out way. The police were able to find out that this man had armored vehicle training and had stolen this tank from a local armory. He was also known to have a history of emotional problems. When I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. This is bad. He's running over fire hydrants. You got hydrants that are blowing water in the air. Get your loudspeaker down, please. This is the San Diego Police Department. Everybody go back to your house and get off the street. He's doing these cars on purpose. We heard the rumbling sound, and um, I saw a tank coming down the street. Thought it was a drill or something. There's cars that are following him, I have no idea why. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's rolling over just about anything he wants to. I was in the locker room uh, at the end of my shift, and I heard the call come out on the radio, so I went back and got in my patrol car and headed to the area. This is the San Diego Police Department. Get out of the street and go back in your house. You're in danger. See if we have any SWAT equipment that can help us out with this thing. He was coming. We just heard a crunch in noise. Crunch, crunch, crunch. It was during that time of day where people are getting off work or out of school. He's coming up towards the school. Okay, 10-4. It was a lot of people here. A lot of them were just in shock. I didn't think they were ever going to stop him unless he ran out of gas. Somebody get a hold of the armory and find out if this thing is loaded. The gun, he was, circ you know, it was circling while he was driving, so we thought maybe he was taking aim at something, you know, to fire it. coming down the street. That palm tree is on the front of the tank. And just as I got out of the driveway, he ran over my truck. He took out the telephone poles over there, and he headed down the street and ran over that blue car right there. And then he went back, and he ran over the fire hydrant and just kept on going. This is like a war zone over here. Yeah, I know he hit one occupied vehicle with a, with a family in it, and they, they just barely escaped before the, the car was crushed. He hit the pole. Dropped them like they were toothpicks, it just snapped them down on the ground. Traffic out of harm's way. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. It looks like he's going to go westbound. Get out of the way, get out of the street, you're in danger. Get to the San Diego Police Department. What kind of a person is inside this tank? What I was told was he uh, had served in the uh, Army as a uh, tank crewman. So he definitely had tank experience. He had the same school that I had gone to. When I got behind him, it was just before he got on the 805 southbound freeway. He had tried to run over a couple of police cars that, uh, that got in his way or, or that he could see and maneuver to. And it was still going at a good you know, 60 mile an hour clip up the freeway. They called our, our SWAT guys to see if they had anything in their arsenal that could stop him. They do not have the ability. They do not. That's do not. They uh, called the National Guard Armory to see what they could do to stop it. Those weren't viable options because the, the armory was miles away by that time. The tank, the tank comes equipped with a uh, what they call a nuclear biological chemical warfare system in it, which means he has fresh air to breathe, so if we used any chemical agents, it would have no effect. At this point, the man in the tank fell back on his military training. He decided to cut off his pursuers by putting a barrier between himself and the police. How? Knock down a bridge across the freeway. Right, you're going to try and take a bridge out. Take a bridge out. Make a bridge. Able hey, well, it's a pedestrian bridge. When he got on the freeway, he made an abrupt right turn, and he struck one of the uh, support pillars that hold up this uh, pedestrian footbridge. My concern was he was trying to collapse the bridge to prevent us from falling him. Well, after a while, he, he gave up on trying to knock this pole out. He continued on south. One of my concerns was that he may have live ammunition on board. He might make a stand and start fighting. He could 
this point, it looked like he's trying to uh, maneuver the tank into the oncoming traffic. And if he had done that, we would have had a, a major chain reaction accident. Oh, my God. They're trying to get the hatch open right now. The police knew that the gravest danger still lay ahead. They didn't have time to stop traffic coming down the opposite lanes of the freeway. If this man got the tank free and into those traffic lanes, the results would be horrible. I used the bolt cutters and cut the hasp on the bolt, twisted the lock off, and opened up the hatch. At that point, we could look down in and we could see the driver. He never answers. He looked back and uh, he made eye contact with Paul, so he knew we were there and he could see both Paul and I through the hatch. Right now, he's trying to come undone, and the, the uh, pavement underneath him is breaking up. It's possible if he keeps uh, jerking this thing side to side, he might be able to break that pavement loose and roll again. The tank had to be stopped right now, and the driver had to be stopped, and Paul had to get in there and take control of the tank. So I fired one round, struck him on the shoulder, and traveled diagonally down through his body, and it was, it was an immediate fatal wound. Had he not become high center on the center divide, I have no idea what would have happened. Uh, I know the people on the other side of the freeway have been hurt or killed because there wasn't room for that tank and all those cars over there. A bizarre and terrible reminder of just how powerless we are.